We've just landed at Nantes Airport. We're about to collect our bags, pick up a hire car, and then we're driving down to La Rochelle because we've got a date with the new Beneteau Swift Trawler 35. We're going to spend a couple of days on it, take it around Ile de Ray, and really get under the skin of the boat. First, we've got to wait for our bags. There's a few scratches on it, apparently. We'll, yeah. see, what, we'll see what that means. First few metres in the hire car are always quite interesting. On the track of the road, new car. Went the wrong way down a one-way street, you installed it. This is an important boat for Veneto. There's a reason why they've invited us to stay on board for two nights and a day and a half here in La Rochelle. They've sold hundreds of the 34, this is the replacement, and that was such a good boat, it's hard to know how they're gonna make it any better, but we shall see. We've now got a couple of days to find out, and here it is. So we've just put in the tanks here in La Rochelle and we are going to go from here and we're going to head out to the Ile de Rey. Specifically, we're going to go here to Saint Martin, which is just here. We're going to head into here, but it has a lock that shuts in around two hours and it's an hour and a half journey. So we'd better get going. So the layout of the 35 is broadly the same as the 34. It has got a, a new hull, the changes are, are pretty minimal, and it uses the same engine that the 34 used, which is great news because that is a great engine. It's the Cummins 425 horsepower single diesel, um, and it's a seriously reliable motor, and it's really well matched for this boat. It's you know good for sort of 18 to 20 knots flat out, um, but perfectly happy to tick along at displacement speeds, and there you've got a range of about 800 miles. Um, the boat has got bow and stern thruster, which is something you need because single shaft can be a bit tricky in close quarters when it's breezy, so the bow and thruster, stern thruster take all the pain out of that. just passed beneath the Pont de Ile de Rey and we're heading around to Saint Martin. It's a beautiful evening for this trip. Hardly a breath of wind, fabulous blue sky, a nice temperature. And we're now going along at about 2,800 RPM, which is a really nice cruising speed for this boat. 15, 16 knots, about 70 litres an hour. And it really feels in its stride. We've dropped down a couple of hundred RPM to around 2,600 now. That's taken us down to 14 knots and we're using 55 litres an hour and again if you don't mind a slightly slower uh, cruising speed then this feels like a, a really nice pace if you're not in too much of a rush. Um, something that was great on the Swift Trawler 34 was this lower helm position. It's no different on the 35. It's so good on a flybridge boat of this size to be able to stand up at the helm properly. Obviously you have the seat behind you so you can lean like this. You have this fantastic proper ship's wheel right in front of you, throttle falls really, really easily to hand, and then you have this side door which is even bigger on the 35. So this aperture is enormous, great for getting some ventilation in for the skipper, obviously makes it very easy to get onto the side deck, and then with the bulwark gate you can get straight onto the pontoon as well. They've made a couple of tweaks, primarily you can now get to all of the electronics by lifting up this section of the dash. There's a couple of screws here, you just undo them previously, you have to go into the bathroom, undo a panel and go in that way. That makes life a lot easier for getting access to the back of the helm panel. Well we've actually made really good progress and here we are coming into Saint Martin and Ile de Ray. and what a beautiful little place. Perfect evening cruise so far. Okay. 
So we've managed to squeeze into San Montan. I think it's the last berth in the place. The boat is just down there, rafted next to that little sailing yacht, but we're in. And what an amazing place. Cobbled streets, shutters on the windows, and without pushing the cliche too far, it genuinely smells of garlic. But what an incredible place to spend the night. Yeah, wonderful spot. So this is my bed for the night. It's pretty cosy, it has to be said. There's not a huge amount of room to move around. You knock your knee on the bed above, but as I said, comfortable enough, cosy enough, but probably only for a couple of nights. You wouldn't want to spend a week in here as an adult, but for kids, absolutely perfect. Good morning. It's a very peaceful night's sleep. Cope surprisingly well with having five on board. And it's a beautiful still morning. We can't actually go anywhere until about two o'clock um, is the tide. So time to go find them for breakfast. But uh, yeah, a decent night's sleep that was. The cockpit is where some of the most significant changes over the 34 are. Uh, the 35 has adopted the split transom that the Swift Trawler 30 uh, first introduced. That standard, the flip down chairs are an option, but if you have them and add in the director's chairs, it means that you can really maximise the amount of space in the cockpit and come right out to the bathing platform. The other thing is that the, the ladder that leads up to the flybridge, that now folds flush up against the, the doors as it is now, but you can adjust it back to make the angle a bit better to get up to the flybridge. But both of those features mean that you're really maximising the amount of cockpit space. The flybridge is another area where there are some significant changes over the previous model. First of all, you have more fixed seating and a fridge on this boat. On the 34, the seating stopped there. Now it wraps all the way around, so you have more comfortable seating for people to sit up here and use. And like the 34, this chair swivels so that it joins the dinette. You don't have the mast that the 34 had. You now have a more sort of traditional radar arch, which is also the place where you stow the bimini, which obviously will move forward over here and give a bit of protection for the seating area here. Major change is aft. The tender no longer lives up on the flybridge like it did on the 34. That's now stowed using davits on the transom. But thankfully there is still enough space back there to put a couple of lounges or comfortable chairs if you want to. That was a key element of why the 34's flybridge was so good because of the sheer amount of open space aft. There isn't quite as much on the 35, but there's still just about enough for you to be able to use it. It was time for us to set off, but not before Skipper Ulis had done the necessary daily engine checks and found us a nice little snack to share on the route around Ile de Re. The plan was to head around the island to find a suitable backdrop for some photography and hopefully some weather that would test the Swift Trawler 35's hull. We meandered out of the harbour and into the teeth of a stiffening northwesterly. At first we could travel at around 60 knots, which feels like the Swift Trawler's most comfortable fast cruising speed, but soon enough as we turned the corner we were forced to throttle back to around 10 knots. This isn't much of an issue on the Swift Trawler, its semi-displacement hull is very happy at these sort of displacement speeds and certainly more comfortable than the equivalent planing hull. It may not be a particularly dry ride, the hull pushing up great sheets of water that are blown across the windscreen, but crucially it's perfectly comfortable and out on the water in general the Swift Trawler 35 is a boat that punches well above its weight. As we neared La Rochelle we upped it to the top speed of 19 knots, which somewhat helps to justify the word Swift in the name Swift Trawler. One of the best parts of the Swift Trawler 35 is how easy it is to crew, whether there's more than one of you or if you're a skipper on your own. This side deck is so safe, so easy to move around on. Obviously you have door, side gate, you can be straight out with a line here or forward. If you're on your own, it makes life really easy. But even when you're clear of this area here and you're moving up onto the side deck, it's still really safe, nice and wide. You've always got something to hold on to. You make your way all the way forward with something right by your hand, just where you want it. 
I asymmetric decks mean that obviously the starboard deck is the biggest one, but that doesn't mean that you can't use the port side one. It's very usable because yes, the decks are asymmetric, but the port side one is still a decent width. And even when you get to here and you're feeling a little bit pinched by the superstructure, you realize that Beneteau fitted this up here so you can still hold yourself nice and steady. Worth noting as well that the gas locker is below my feet here. Really easy to get to and tucked out of the way as well. Can we talk about the styling for a second? Because yes, it's contemporary and fresh and more modern. Obviously it falls into line with the way the Swift Trawler 30 looks, but I also think that in losing the mast and the teak capping on the bulwarks, those traditional hints, it may have lost a little bit of its charm as well. Still a handsome boat, but maybe not quite as charming as the previous model. The interior layout is broadly the same as the previous boat. What you do notice is that you have much more glass on the starboard side. This window is now floor to ceiling and unbroken, so the feeling of light is improved. This is still a pull-out bed. It's a proper pull-out bed as well, really comfortable, though because this cabinet here is wider to give you improved storage in these cupboards here, you can't have the bed out and still make your way around the foot of it, which is a little bit of a, a pain, uh, but no major issue. The galley has been slightly reworked. Um, wasn't too sure about this at first, this little perch here, but actually today we've been out at sea for two, three hours and I found myself here quite a lot, either facing into the boat or perched facing forward. So actually quite a neat idea. And then we have the double helm station, again, much the same as the previous model, but there are some more changes to look at if we go and look down below. So the physical layout is still the same, but there are some tweaks that just make it a bit more comfortable. One obvious one is this split door. On the old boat, you'd have one big door and it would come a long way into the accommodation. This means that these don't impede so much on the space. The bed is also much lower and easier to get around. You can get up and into bed much more easily. The cabin for guests is still a bunk cabin. It's pretty cozy. It's where myself and the photographer stayed last night. And yeah, you're not gonna to wanna to spend a week in there, that's for sure. But for the odd night, for adults, it's perfectly fine. For kids, it's absolutely great. And then the bathroom, that's had a bit of a change around as well. That now has a separate shower compartment with a proper door as opposed to the wet room shower curtain style bathroom that the Swift Trawler 34 had. So a good improvement there. Well, that trip, has been an excellent way to really get to know the Swift Trawler 35. We've had it in rough conditions, calm conditions, we took it round Hill de Rey, we slept on board, we ate on board, and the overall impression is that Beneteau has made what was a great boat even better. If you already own a Swift Trawler 34, then there probably aren't enough changes to justify the upgrade, but if you're in the market for a 35-foot trawler yacht, this is still the one to beat.